next will be telling us about how many, how many of you have this problem? How do you pronounce it? It's tinnitus. <coughs> tinnitus or tinnitus <coughs> tomato. Well, you get to explain. Either way is correct. You get to explain that whole difference. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, I've been chasing electrons for 42 years. Started out uh, during the Vietnam War on the USS Compass Island in the early 70s when she perfected GPS, which we're all used to now. Later on, I got a job working on a subcontract for Aerojet on the A-10 Warthog. You, some of you may be familiar with that plane. It's a tank killer. They're still using it. And we uh, created one of the first microprocessor-based robots at that time. This was uh, using uh, Intel's very first microprocessor. So I've had a pretty interesting uh, electronic career, but the most exciting thing happened about seven years ago. I hooked up with a guy named Jeremy Turner. He's a research auto wear oncologist at Southern Illinois University Medical School in Springfield, Illinois. And we uncovered a method uh, to test tinnitus in human beings, tinnitus or tinnitus, either way is uh, correct. And tinnitus has become uh, very de debilitating for some individuals. Uh, William Shatner had it so bad he considered suicide. Um, it's a pretty common thing with uh, um, uh, rock and roll bands and people that are exposed to uh, loud noises. It's the number one medical disability issue for the Department of Defense and this actually should say the Veterans, uh, uh, not the Veterans Administration, that shows my age from uh, back, that's what we called it back in the 80s, but it's a Veterans Affairs uh, group. But last year the, they, they spent $1.5 billion in compensation payments alone. That's just compensation for the condition. It's their biggest compensation cost. Beyond that, there are 16 million in the U.S. that have sought treatment. The actual invention is based on a, a, a behavioral method called startle reflex. So as you see our armadillo friend here, he got startled and he jumped. You see a cat, they'll jump. Human beings, if you ever uh, watched a 21 gun salute, they all flinch. Um, <coughs> And that's what the, uh, the method is based on. In, in the case of the human beings, it's just that ever so slight uh, <coughs> reflex that we elicit, just no more than the blinking of my eyes, so we're not really inducing large reflexes. We only have to get a slight eye blink out of them. The way it works is, in a, uh, a normal startle eye blink, you give uh, the subject a uh, abrupt sound, and that sound will cause them to blink, and we record that blink, and the little red uh, guy there is the eye blink response. Now there's a, a paradigm called pre-pulse inhibition. If you give a smaller pulse, not enough to elicit startle, previous to the startle eliciting pulse, it will inhibit or shrink the human eye blink reflex. There is a, a variant of that called gap detection where instead of putting a pulse in, you have a background sound and you turn the sound off. So what you're doing is eliciting the system with the lack of sound, with that gap of sound. Now that's, that is a 30-year-old uh, paradigm that's been used in preclinical and clinical studies for schizophrenia. In fact, uh, Pre-pulse inhibition is the most common tool used for studying uh, schizophrenia. And, the, and what we did was we understood that what had been going on for all these years with tinnitus is scientists had been looking at what, what people hear. But what we decided, what we uncovered was if you take uh, uh, the background sound and make it qualitatively similar to the person's tinnitus. If they have tinnitus, they will not 
respond the same as a person that doesn't have tinnitus. In other words, normal hearing person, their tinnitus, their uh, eye blink signal will shrink by as much as 60 or 70 percent. If the background sound is similar to the tinnitus and you have tinnitus, your response will be normal. And that is the essence of the actual invention. So what we do is we determine that they cannot hear this silence. We're actually measuring that they can't hear silence. Rather than hearing what, they, what sounds they hear, we determine that they can't hear silence buried in the background sound. Um, and this is hot off the press. I'm really excited about this. Hot off the press meeting yesterday. <laughs> This is uh, a publication that came out yesterday in Hearing Research uh, where we have the first peer-reviewed um, scientific data collected by a third-party lab, so they don't have a dog to hunt in it other than they're just trying to figure out if it really works, showing that indeed this invention does measure uh, tinnitus in human beings. We did get a patent on January 5th, that's patent number. And, and, and we've often been asked, well, okay, you're measuring, but so what? How's that going to help me, the, the person with tinnitus? I, my mind's profound, by the way. I've had it since I was 12. And mine has been loud enough that in, 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 a, in a baseball game, I was at last year's uh, World Series, I could hear it over the crowd. So it can be incredibly loud. And so why it matters is if we can accelerate drug development. And on the preclinical side, we actually have uh, changed the face of research. Our customers are buying these. Customers like Santa Fe Venice, a big drug company, um, a local company, Autonomy, they're buying the preclinical model to help them develop a pharmaceutical for tinnitus. Um, it helps bring efficacy to that $1.5 billion I was telling you about. So the vet that has, uh, you know, tinnitus is so bad that if he wants to kill himself, as I was mentioning, you can be taken to that point. He's getting the same compensation as one that has it very little or doesn't even have it at all. So the distribution of those funds is uh, not being done the way we would hope. So that's what it does. It'll help prevent malingering. It also will establish insurance claims. Insurance companies are starting to actually uh, engage in policies for tinnitus. There is a CPT code, that's a, a code that says to a clinician, hey, if you give uh, Medicare this code, you can get reimbursed for it. That's it. Any questions? It's an advanced audiogram, if you will. That's, that is basically what it is, right. Yes. I, I'm, I'm sorry to say, I'm not really sure. What is the product, though? Is it the, it's is a it medical the... diagnostic of tinnitus ringing in the ear. So we have our invention will be be brought to the FDA to be approved as a medical diagnostic, the first medical diagnostic okay. for tinnitus. So it's the thing that the person was wearing in the picture? Yeah, that was it. That was okay. measure an eye blink. Now, we also have another patent uh, uh, pending that's for uh, EEG, which is actually measuring brain waves, which is even more, uh, less uh, of a hassle to so, so you mean you're going to be able to actually measure the degree of tinnitus a person is experiencing? I'm sorry, Mike. So can't quite hear you. Measure the degree to which Yes, we can quantify the level of their tinnitus, so actually. Can... Not, 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 not like blood pressure measuring, but, but, you know, like small, medium, and large, so you know. Yeah, yeah right, so, right, right, exactly.